Hi, I'm Joshua Finn with JNH Aerospace. Today we're going to build the um, the Caspian Sea Monster. There's a proper name for it. I don't have it in front of me. So, uh, what you should know about this build is what we have currently is, is we're building out the prototype kit. So I'll point out a few changes that are going to be taking place um, as we go. Uh, but the the build strategy that you see here is representative of what's in your kit and we will have this fully tested and any trim issues worked out before you have purchased it. So, I just want to give that disclaimer. Uh, the reason we're doing this is we're trying to accelerate it. It's, this is uh, an aircraft that's being built by a contractor of ours, um, and as a result, we're, we're trying to um, do some back and forth and get this build out for you as quickly as possible. So what you will get is probably the craziest FAC jet catapult glider there is. Uh, so, Hope you enjoy the build. I uh, hope you um, like uh, this video enough to purchase this if, if you haven't already. So anyway, let's get started with what's in your kit. So what we have here is a fairly tightly packed item. Of course, all your documentation is, is in here, so if anything breaks, you can uh, reproduce it. Um, so, first of all, for our inventory, this is your uh, your fuselage assembly. Um, we may have this set up to a, um, a sharp point uh, by the time you get, you get to yours. Um, this is your wing assembly, so it's just a rectangle with a, a score line down the middle of it. Um, this is your rudder assembly. Uh, it's possible by the time you get this that it'll only be this part and the, the fuselage will take that up. We're going to make sure uh, in experimental testing that it's strong enough this way. These are your um, few of your little fittings, so your dihedral gauges uh, for your wing, for your stab, because uh, your stab is, is airfoil. You get a score line for the, uh, for the dihedral on it. This is your, your front canard with the little alignment marks on it. These are standoffs for um, the engine pylons that go on the, the tail of the aircraft. Um, I should mention, depending on which one of these you model, there was a version in which these engines were up on top of the fuselage, so uh, that's also a, a possibility, so your, your scale documentation takes precedence there. Um, and then these are your, your little engine nacelles. These are the, the two extra ones that either go on top of the fuselage or back on the rudder. And then these are your, uh, your wingtip stabilizers. And in FAC competition, these actually provide bonus points. So um, those, are, those are important. Uh, additionally, catapult handle, your uh, rubber band for that, balancing weight, and of course, a plywood catapult hook. So. Let me go get some wax paper and we'll get started with the build. Okay, we're going to get started with the fuselage here. So we're going to pop the, um, pop this guy out. Alright. So you'll notice as it is here, you've got this little notch underneath. I'll turn it around and see you can see here. So it sits like that. Um, you want the, the top to be a continuous shape across there. This part right here, uh, if you notice, we've just got a, a slot carved right now. Uh, that's going to change into something a little... Um, you'll actually have a, a slot for your wing that's kind of the, the airfoil shape. So we're going to take some CA here. We're just going to join this fuselage together. So we want to do this on a flat surface, get all that in there. Um, one of the things you'll notice, I, 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 well I'm noticing on this, is that this wood is not perfectly uniform thickness, so this is a good time for you to come in here and just level everything out. And make sure it's straight. Let's see, that's straight. 
I'm also going to grab a razor blade here. And again, you should not have to do this. But I know about what thickness my wing is here. Next thing we'll do is we'll go find the uh, our rudder, this piece right here. And so the rudder, well, it's on the back of here. Now the important thing to notice, and again, like I said, uh, yours will probably have the fuselage come all the way back like this, so you'll just join on top here. But the thing is, you've got a step right here. Uh, hang on, let me trim that so you can see it a little better. So, like that, there's a step right there. Now, there are two approaches you can take to how you build the um, how you sand things out. So you can sand it um, before you attach everything together or you can wait until after. Um, the main thing is we want everything to mate in smoothly. We do want to thin out a little bit back here. So that's what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to thin things out a little bit. Uh, but understand you don't want to get, uh, if you're one of my fellow FAC guys, you don't want to thin this vertical stab out too much because it's going to be the support for your horizontal stab. And this part's a little tricky to get it all sanded out just perfect light. Uh, main thing is Sand all that down, but leave this uh, leave this flat up here, and then you can round things off a little bit around the top. Again, leave this section flat, and work your way all the way around. Don't sand this um, little nose thing down too much because it's uh, a little on the fragile side. First thing is going to hit the ground in the event that uh, the airplane crashes. And this is a little bit of a tricky airplane to trim, so expect it to crash a few times before you get everything right on it. Alright, so the bottom line is, you end up with a fuselage that looks like that. So, we're going to take a break here, and then we'll come back and do the wing. Okay, so here we have our wing. I'm going to go ahead and pop the um, carrier sheet loose on it. Alright, so here we go. This um, score line, I set, had the settings wrong on this one, so... Um, this one's kind of a, a test piece, if you will. The, the score line normally will be a lot thinner. Um, and in the event you were doing that, I would actually tell you 
The side that the score line's not on is the side that you need to do your cutting, your uh, planing from. Um, as you plane through it, then you've got the uh, the problem that it um, that you lose it since it's a uh, surface feature, and you're sanding away a lot of the surface here. Now, how much you want to airfoil this is a function of how much performance you're trying to get out of the plane and how much time you're willing to spend on it. So, um, I'm going to try to give you an idea of a decent airfoil here. You can see this thing's trying to come apart on me as I'm doing this. Yours will not do that. And um, very important to take in, in mind, um, don't plane the trailing edge too terribly thin. Yeah, work your way up forward here. Let's try to get a, a nice gradual taper here. Front, we'll kind of do a normal front face to our airfoil. Airfoil is not super, super critical on this thing because this is a very low aspect ratio wing. This thing's not going to have a fantastic glide. The goal is to shoot it up there and, you know, enjoy it. Try to get a little bit of a thermal hunting thing out of it. I can tell you uh, from experience, an airplane like this um, can catch thermals, can fly away, uh, etc. So um, if you're if you spend the time to find good air, it will make use of it. I found very few airplanes that absolutely will not thermal. side here. Now this is a touch that I highly recommend you put in regardless of how much time you're willing to spend on an airfoil. Sanding a little bit of the bottom of the wing leading edge is very very important. See even Pee Wee agrees over there and the rooster. Tearing up my uh, wax paper here. Good job, me. Go me. Yes. And this thing is just broken completely here. That's okay. We're gonna set it up for dihedral here in a minute anyway. Ah! Stop it! Let's try it. sure this guy fits in its little slot without any major resistance. It does. Cool. Alright, so we're going to double this guy for dihedral. Fit. I have a decent fit. Um, one thing is, if 
you're not super um, obsessive about it, that joint seems to be hidden inside the fuselage, so it's not that critical anyway. All right, so these are your wing dihedral gauges. We're gonna. This is. We want this thing to fly halfway decently, so we're going to. Um, we're going to give you a lot of dihedral, and the reason we're going to give you a lot of dihedral is we want this thing to fly decently. Um, now there are two ways you can do this: you can suspend each wingtip under these gauges, or you can do what I do, which is to kind of cheat. I just glue them together. So. This guy here, that's our dihedral angle. You yeah, know it's a lot of dihedral, that's okay. I'll give you a nice flying airplane. Alright, so we've got that glue uh, on there. And there we go. So I know this is a uh, kind of a, a boring looking wing, um, but anyway, much done. Wing will slide in here. A little bit of a um, tight fit there. Make sure your fuselage hasn't hung up and taken a curve there at all. Cool beans. And now at this point, I'm actually, um, there are a variety of ways to do this. I'm going to cheat here. I'm just going to shoot some thin CA in here. Um, you guys beware of doing this because um, it can get a little out of hand. Uh, I will mention, depending on your finishing method, you may want to build out all these assemblies and paint them before you uh, install them because you know, just depending on, on what your personal style is in finishing these out. So uh, please take that into account. All right, so that's got that um, that part of things. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and put the, uh, the wing tips on here. Since this is a pre-production kit, um, we'll see a few things don't come out quite as um, quite as easily here. You've got this angled part. Oh, here we go. You got this angled part down here, right there, that goes on the bottom. The gentle curve to the top. So we're going to take this. I'm going to set it in here. It extends out slightly ahead of the wing leading edge there. We may include some markings in the future showing exactly how much. And I am just going to. Glue this directly to the wingtip. Some of you will want to have it parallel to the fuselage, so you would want to bevel the uh, the wingtip for that. It's your choice. And there you go. All right, we're going to take a break for a second. I'm going to put the other one on. We'll just do that off camera to shorten the uh, the length of this video. Okay, so we've got the second wing tip installed. I'm going ahead and sanded it off to a continuous curve here. Um, there were a number of variations of this aircraft, so make sure the one that you're, um, if you're flying this airplane competitively at least, make sure that any profiles like this that you're sanding in, um, that that's what they did on the, the actual aircraft, just to get that extra little level of accuracy. Um, 
folks are getting uh, pretty serious about how they detail these out these days. So, if you want to win, get it all right. We all know most of us, though, that are building this are just building this it because it's utterly, completely insane. Um, which is the best reason to build one of these. Best reason to build any jet catapult model, really. Alright, so, next we're going to take our tail and our tail dihedral gauge out. You can airfoil this out real nice. Um, I'm not going to get really detailed with it. Good news is this has a, a very, very large uh, stab, so it's nice and easy to trim. Especially with that canard out front that allows you to fly with a more forward CG, so you can get plenty of. Um, uh, vertical stab area on this airplane. That should make it nice and straightforward to trim it out. Okay, we're back. Um, Alright, so we're going to score the, cut this along a little score line here. You can use a saw if you wish. Um, refer to our other videos for that. Now, I'm going to mention something here. Uh, we will probably discuss this further in some of our uh, trimming videos on this airplane. Um, there are two ways you can set the dihedral here. So if you set it out here, you get just a little bit. Um, otherwise, you can have considerably more. Um, really, again, this is this is up to personal preference. I'm going to reduce it a little bit. That's why I'm going to put it out here. And if we run into yaw stability problems, we'll mention that in the um, in the notes um, or clarify it for you. Bottom line is, keep an eye out for that. So, now we've got our dihedral set for, well, I thought we did, never mind, let me try again. I misjudged the glue for once in my life. It's taking too long. Alright, there it comes. Alright, and then your stab is going to sit up here, like so. Um, not a flush with the, the back, back here. And I would suggest sanding a flat in the bottom of this stab. Just to give yourself a real smooth surface to mount it up on. And you can do stab tilt or what have, have you to your heart's content. But uh, bottom line is you can lay things down like so and you can get a fairly close approximation. I'm actually going to take my uh, sanding block here. Maybe set this on top here. And then let me maybe. Ah, here we go. Let's do it this way. Set the sanding block up like so. And now I can mount this fairly accurately.
And again, you can put some stab tilt in or, or what have you as needed. Or you can also be the way I would normally do this build, which is I would just eyeball it because that's how I build. All up to your personal preference. Alright, so that's starting to look like a completely ridiculous machine, right? Alright, so we're almost done with our build here, actually. I'm going to take the uh, our canard surface out here. And that's right there. And then I'm going to take these little nacelles and reinstall them. Now, I am not going to install all of these on camera, and the reason is there are a lot of them. Eight, to be exact. And when I laser cut this, I want it too conservative. You will not have this problem. These will pretty much just drop out of the sheet for you. So. Apparently this airplane is amazing to our younger crowd, so this wow. is why you should buy one of these for your young one, because they will love it. And then these guys just slide on, and then you use those, those little score lines to, to mark them. Now, I'm going to suggest that you mount this canard <laughs> facing down, like so. Reason being, now this score line won't show. I am going to do one thing, I'm going to pull this off. And I'm going to sand a um, just a, a rounded edge in this canard. You'll we'll, we'll want to notice there are various corners, like right here and right here. So don't round those off. Those kind of add to the appearance of your airplane, the fearsomeness of it, if you will. And you just sand some of the laser mark off the tips here. Now you could mount all those nacelles on here after you attach this to the top of the airplane. Um, I'm not going to, and that's my prerogative. Um, also you may want to paint them up before you attach them, so your choice again. So bottom line is I'm going to slide this one on right here like so. I'm going to hit it with some thin CA. And there it goes. So we'll be back once I've got the rest of these on here. Okay, we have this canard assembly put together. You can see I've got the little engine nacelles all on it. Uh, I flesh mounted these on the outside here, and we'll just clean that up real quick. Um, do you take a little bit of time to make sure these are, are decently parallel to each other, because uh, that will affect your flight trim. And also notice there are two larger nacelles here. So you'll notice there's a size difference. These do not go on the canard. You'll notice the slots don't really fit it anyway. We'll assemble those onto the aircraft in a second. So we're going to set this guy in here. Try to get this lined up. You've got that line on there. Um, I'm going to put it on the top. Uh, if you paint this, the, um, the line will disappear anyway. So, the main thing is just make sure you have a plan for making any of these little construction marks like that go away. The line does, does allow you to sight down the fuselage, make sure everything is lined up. And there we go. So we've got our crazy, crazy looking aircraft. Now, the last bit got these little rectangular pieces here. I'm going to pop those out. There are two ways to do this. One is there's a scenario in which you would mount these like so. 
There we go. On either side of one of these. I don't know if I can get the fit in there, but there we go. And then you would mount in between here, and so this piece would go, I think, somewhere around here or up front. I'm not sure exactly where. I don't have the photos in front of me. I've only seen one photo in which that configuration was used. The normal configuration, I'll get this back out here to the outside so it makes a good mount. Um, This component is now going to go back here on your rudder. Make sure from your photo documentation you know where you need to, get, you need to put it and consider making a line so you're parallel here. Um, I have not done that and the reason is I don't know exactly where it goes off top of my head. Um, actually, we're going to stop real quick. I'm going to bring up a photo on my phone and I'll, I'll show you that. Okay, if you look right here, you can see. Let's see. These are where the engines go back here, so they're about halfway up the rudder. That's one location they were. This aircraft was modified many times, so bear that in mind. So I am just going to sight down here um, for where to just put a, a score line. And let me look at this one more time. So on this version, the engines. Um, stick out in front a little bit. Okay, so we've got our line here. And I'm just going to set this guy up to, to mount on front of that. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke my razor blade through so that I leave a little hole on the other side here. One at the front and one at the back. And that allows me to have marks on the other side that are exactly the same place. Now you may be asking, well, Josh, why don't you provide us with score lines in the rudder for that? And the answer is, again, the, there are multiple configurations this aircraft was set up with during its, its service life. And, and there was more than one of these as well. Um, and I want to leave you the opportunity to model the, the one that your personal crazy whim uh, likes the most. Because these things were, were crazy machines and um, I don't want to dictate to you which one that you, that you want to reproduce. Um, they each have their merits. Right, so we line up again with our score marks that we have punched through with the razor blade. And there we go. Now, I've got to track down. Okay, so we've got those installed as you see. So our airplane is, is built out. One last tidbit. If I can get it here. There we go. This is the uh, little catapult hook. I'll pop this out, um, double the top of it so it's nice and sharp. So that's the flat edge right across here. We want to double, want to double the flat edge. Now, the rest of it I would give a general sanding real, real quick. And then come up here uh, around this bow plane area right about there. And we're going to take a razor blade. Where I cut in there. The and we will slip that in there. Make sure it's firmly in there. And then all we have to do is squirt some thin CA in there or, or whatever your glue of choice is. And there you go. So now you can grip the airplane anywhere back here, set up your catapult, and so on. Which at this point I will mention. This is how we do our catapult. Uh, in case you're, uh, in case this is the first time you have dealt with one of our aircraft, we take our rubber strand and leave the little tails here a little bit long. 
and then loop it out like so, bring it back on itself. And then I stick my fingers through and do this maneuver, which now brings catapult loop in. And I can slip that over there. And now I've got a nice little slip knot for my rubber band. Um, final thing, I'm not going to tell you an exact location for where your CG should be. However, um, I will say you're going to need some clay up front. So this thing is currently balancing way back here. I would say put your CG somewhere around here to get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some clay out here on the nose, nose area. And I just glued myself to the side of the plane and the left. Okay. Alright, so now we're balancing right about here. So I'm going to put some more clay on. Now your CG is going to probably end up different from mine because um, there are a lot of factors in where you put your CG on one of these, but I've got mine right about here, so about a third of the way back, a little past a third of the way back. Um, and anyway, we're going to stop a second and we'll give you a test glide here in a minute. Okay, so we've got this thing outside now, and uh, I haven't made any changes from that, we just, just came out here, so I'm going to give this a test glide. You can see it looks like it's actually, nope, I'm dropping my clay. Actually, it looks a little bit nose heavy. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of the clay off of here. The plane does have some built-in incidents. So, looking a little better. I'm going to take a little more clay off. Alright, so, I'll try once more. And that actually looks really nice. Alright, so just to give you an update on the progress here, um, our CG is now, we got a little bit of a breeze, CG is right about there, so actually we're about a third of the way from the trailing edge now. It's not unsurprising, it's a big stab. Um, we do have some built-in incidents, but not a whole lot. I'm going to give this a harder toss real quick. Yeah, it may need a little bit of up elevator, we'll see. We're gonna, um, uh, I'm going to go get it, we're going to take it back there and give it a, a quick catapult shot. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a shot on one loop of 1.8. And we see the airplane kind of noses over, so we're going to give it a little more up elevator. I'll be right back. Alright, so I've given this a little bit of up elevator. And now we have very, very nice launch. And we're actually a little nose heavy, so I'll take some more clay. Alright, I'm going to go to quick test glide. And that was too much clay. Get a little heavy handed with it, I guess. So let's try again. And needs a little bit more back. Alright. So we'll give this another catapult shot. And it pops out there and glides very, very, very nicely. Alright, um, I think the CG actually is a little bit too far aft yet, because uh, it's kind of mushing there. So, uh, things you should know, CG is fairly sensitive on this. We'll give you some, um, there will be another video where we'll show footage of it flying all pretty like. I mean, I'm not launching it hard or anything. Um, optimally, you know, it's circling uh, to the right in both climb and glide. Uh, I would give it a little bit of left rudder to get it going to the left. Um, but anyway, uh, there you have it. This uh, airplane flies great. Um, so any questions or comments, post them in the comments section below. And we'll talk to you later. See you.